Before we get started, I just want to say that uh, in October, I'm going to be teaching a class that's uh, seven weeks um, over Zoom, and it's all going to be about text to image. So we'll go sort of like soup to nuts, like start, uh, you know, from really basic, what is text to image, all the way up to training our own diffusion models. Um, so it'll be seven weeks. Um, if you want to get access to that, you can um, sign up for my newsletter, and then uh, you'll be one of the first people outside of Patreon or YouTube members um, to get access to sign up for that class. We'll say Patreon and YouTube members have already gotten the link to uh, that class if they want to sign up for it. Um, so it'll be New York Central evening time on Thursdays, um, running through October through December. Um, so this video will actually be a little uh, glimpse of some of the things we'll look at. Um, so yeah, so like if you're thinking about text to image or if you started playing around with text to image, you know that like the biggest challenge with text to image is figuring out what is the best prompt to use. Um, and you will find lots of web pages of people documenting all of their various prompts. You'll find other artists who keep their prompts close to their chest and will never reveal them. Um, everyone is sort of approaching text prompts as their own way. And we're starting to see like a bunch of tools come out that are maybe helpful in, in sort of helping you understand um, what the what clip sees and how we can then from there uh, understand what maybe what prompts we want to use. So I'm going to look at a tool called Blip today. Um, it's not really meant to help with uh, text image, but because it's using um, the similar tooling of, of Clip, um, it actually does allow you to sort of kind of understand how Clip works or how Clip thinks and might begin to hint at how you would be able to use this um, to further create like good prompts for text image. Um, so really quickly, this is on Hugging Face. I've done one or two Hugging Face demos already, um, but it's a really nice tool because it's really fast and easy and you don't need to set up Colab. Um, it's free uh, and they th put up a lot of different websites. These are all on Hugging Face Spaces. Um, they put up a ton of new models. Like I feel like there's a new model every day. Um, if you're familiar with AK on uh, Twitter, um, they are often putting up Hugging Face or Gradio demos that you can quickly access. So Blip is a tool from Salesforce. The idea is that it just uses Clip, I believe. Um, I think that's why it's called Blip. It uses Clip to actually uh, do image captioning or visual question and answer. So we'll look at how to use this uh, a little bit. Um, and I think you can sort of see like maybe how the hint it hints at how you might be able to use this for your own text prompts if you're generating images. So first off, I just want to say I'm grabbing this image from Stephen Young on Twitter. Um, I Saw this come through on my um, Twitter feed maybe a couple days ago. Um, that was a really cool image, so I just want to use it uh, as maybe a way to, um, you know, maybe you see a cool image and you want to see, like, how might have they produced produce that or what, what text prompt would they have used? Um, one thing you can do is you can start to try to use some of these new tools and reverse engineer it. So that's what we're going to do here today. Sorry, Steven, if this is blowing up your spot. I actually don't think this tool works as well as I may hope it does, but let me just show you how it works and then you can sort of decide for yourself. So uh, you'll head over to huggingface.co slash spaces slash salesforce slash blip. And when you open up the model, um, you'll be asked to upload an image. So I just went ahead and already uploaded this image. So click on the space and then choose upload. Now from here, there are two different tasks. One is image captioning, which is probably we'll look at mostly, but there is also a visual question answer. And this is sort of the idea of like, um, maybe you have a, a question you want to ask about how, uh, what is in the image, right? So maybe there's a bunch of images of dogs and uh, you want to say, how many dogs are in this photo? Um, and I might be able to guess. Um, in this case, one thing we could try is we could say, like, uh, what color is this image? Um, so we'll click on visual question answering. Uh, we'll ask our question. And then there are two different decoding strategies. I'm not super familiar with exactly what these mean, but I would say, like, experiment with them. You might find that one, one of these options gives you better results than the other, or you might just want to sort of see what they both provide, and then you'll be able to use that as sort of your own averaging system for your own text prompt. So once you put in our question here, you can just uh, click on one of these and we'll hit submit. And it should be pretty fast. So we'll see the answer using beam search is purple. The other thing I recommend is like, sometimes if you reload this multiple times, you'll get different answers. So we can just play this over and over again, although I'm fairly certain this one's always gonna return purple. We can try it with nucleus sampling as well and see if we get a different result. Purple. Um, so we could say what colors are in this image and see if it returns multiple colors. Blue and purple. Switch to beam search. Blue and purple. Uh, so we could also say like uh, what is uh, in this image. Mushroom. So this is a mushroom. We switch to nucleus sampling. 
mushroom, so we get the same answer here. Um, we could also say, you know, style being really important is we could say what style is this image. Abstract. And abstract here as well. So maybe if I wanted to regenerate this image, I would say something like abstract mushroom in blue and purple. Right? That might not give me ex the exact image, but it would give me an idea of what, what I'm using here. So next is image captioning. And I find this is pretty helpful because this doesn't require you to ask a question. It just sort of says like what's in this image. So we can just sort of remove this and we can say image captioning and then we can hit submit. You'll see a very strange looking object in the middle of the ocean. Okay. Um, this is where I kind of tend to find that if I run this multiple times, I'll get different responses. So usually what I might do is I might just copy these and paste them into a text file and maybe run it five or seven, five or six times. Okay, this keeps saying a visual, a very strange object and in in looking in the middle of the ocean. Let's switch over to Nucleus, see if I get different results. A very strange thing with bubbles and water. The planet surrounded by water is covered with a giant mushroom. The mushroom is an artistic image with no caption. Okay. A surreal image that resembles a large mushroom shaped object. Let's go back to beam search. I don't know if this is going to keep returning just the, the one response. Yeah, so it looks like beam search might always return the same caption. Whereas nucleus sampling is kind of giving me like different results every time it runs. A very large ball with small spots in the sky. So at this point, if I run this, you know, one more time, I'll have, you know, a handful of like sort of text prompts here. A digital painting of a mushroom-like thing floating on the water. So maybe if I want to try to regenerate this image or generate something like it, I can then use these text prompts. A digital painting of a mushroom-like thing floating on the water. Maybe then I want to say blue and purple or whatever. So, you know, you can sort of provide a little bit of these color options. Um, what's nice about this is this is telling you what clip sees. And because we're using clip to actually modify our images, um, you want to use similar language as what it, it uses. So let's say I upload an image of a dog and it doesn't see a dog. It keeps seeing a sheep or something. If it keeps saying like, hey, this is a sheep and not a dog, it's probably a bad example because I think it knows what dogs look like. Um, if it finds other images or other phrases there that, you know, maybe don't match up with what you see, it's helpful to use those phrases in your text prompts because very likely that clip sort of is seeing something you can then regenerate back into your output of an image. Um, this is again, like this is kind of this process of just trying to relearn how clip thinks and then working alongside of it as you generate images. Um, so you don't want to say something like, you know, um, I mean, maybe you do want to say something like a nuclear bomb. You might want to compare those two side by side. But clearly what it's seeing here is more something like a mushroom. Um, we've seen mushroom pop up in a bunch of different options here. So this is a good example of just like how you might begin to understand um, how clip thinks, and then you can use that to regenerate images from it. So this is a quick example of what I'm going to be covering in my class. There are lots of other tools that um, maybe go even a little bit further. Uh, like if you know that, you know, maybe this is using trending on ArtStation. It, it isn't, but it, it might be. Um, maybe it's using, you know, 3D uh, digital illustration or something. Like a lot of those like style prompts and things. Um, Blip won't really uncover those, um, but there are other tools that might. So I'll probably maybe show a couple more of those before class starts. Um, but this is kind of one of the areas we'll look at a lot in class. So we're going to look at how to control the output of your images. Um, and a lot of that comes down to text prompts, but also initializing with images, um, using images as source material, um, you know, video inputs, like lots of other things that we can go through. Uh, so if this sounded sort of whetted your appetite, um, I hope you'll consider signing up for the class. Um, I think it's about a third of the way sold out already. Um, so it's going to go up publicly next week. Um, so I would expect it to sell out quickly. Um, so if you are interested, please sign up for my newsletter. I really only send out emails whenever I have new classes. I don't bomb you with other, other crap or like promote my own things on there. It's mostly just about class and other materials. Um, so I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you use Blip and find something cool, let me know. Um, if you have another technique here that works better, uh, let me know about that too. Um, all right, until next time. Thanks.